What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't wanna miss them. This is a four of four video series on how to suture like a surgeon. The first few videos were about uh, suturing, the different types of sutures, as well as how to instrument tie. In this video today, we're going to be talking about how to throw one hand and two hand surgical knots. All right, thank you to the sponsors of this video over at Artasia, as well as suturekit.com. Make sure you check them out in the description below for a discount for you guys. All right, so if you have watched the previous videos, we talked about how to handle your instruments in the operating room. I have my suture that's loaded on the needle driver here. And as we talked about before, you wanna make sure that your needle driver is not too close to the edge of the, the suture, not too close to the end of it. You want it about two thirds of the way back and I like it kind of angled a couple degrees. We have our Atson pickup here and we have a small pair of scissors to cut the suture after we throw the stitch. So the first thing that we're going to do um, is actually just throw a a suture. So as we talked about in previous videos, you want to make sure that you are a few millimeters from the edge of the laceration or skin edge and you want to take the same amount on both sides as well as the same depth. You want to go in about 90 degrees and come out the other side. We're going to pull that through and you want to pull it all the way through so that this second end of the suture here is not too long. For one thing, that wastes a lot of suture, and a second thing, it um, kind of wastes a lot of space in the operating room. As discussed before, for a instrument tie, you wanna put your instrument or your needle driver right in the middle. You don't want it on this side, you don't want it on this side, you want it right in the middle. And then we're gonna wrap it around twice. And you wanna grab the edge of that, and then lay it down. As you can see, that's a nice little knot there. If we were, our hands were twisted, you can see that way, you wanna twist your hands the opposite direction and make sure it lays down pretty nicely. Right in the middle again. This time you only have to do it once. Grab it, lay it down. And the third time to actually lock this knot here, you wanna put it not here, but the opposite side, wrap it, and pull it through. So that's a quick review of a simple suture with, with, with a instrument tie. And we're gonna throw this suture here to replicate a wound. And then we're gonna practice the one hand as well as two hands. So a few millimeters from the skin edge here. You can take it in two bites or one bite. The last suture was one bite. And usually I decide this, whether it's one or two bites, on whether I can get it through the skin within one bite. If not, I'll just take it in two bites. The same depth as well as distance on the other side of the wound here. So that's a little too far, so I'm gonna start over. And when we're throwing these one hand and two hand surgical knots, you want to have equal distance on both sides of your suture to give you a little room. So the first thing you wanna do, we're gonna start off with one hand knot. Um, you, you, you want to make sure that you utilize your index finger as well as your thumb. You wanna grab one edge like this here, like you're going to, like you're pointing to someone. So we'll try that again. Basically just kind of inverting your finger there. And the second one, and your left hand, you're actually grabbing the suture between your thumb and your index finger. So a one-handed knot is usually when we need to throw a suture just kind of deep into a wound. Say for instance, we're suturing in the belly or deep down in the back. Well, it's hard to instrument tie kind of deep down into a surgical wound. So if you imagine the wound is really deep down, it's hard to get your instrument down in there. So 
One way to get around that is actually just um, hand tie. Some surgeons and professors prefer students to tie with one hand versus two hands, so it just depends, but I would make sure that you practice both. And you need to be really comfortable throwing a one-handed versus a two-handed. So we're gonna do one-handed. My left hand is the post, and the post, you wanna keep it still, and then everything will pivot around your post here. See the post? And then your right hand is actually gonna be throwing the suture around the post. So your finger out, invert it like this here, and you want to overlap your right hand with your left hand, like this here. And then I'm gonna use the end of my index finger to grab the this portion that's right next to my thumb. So touch the two, and then you wanna grab the portion next to my right thumb, and then pull it through. And you can see the, the knot going down there. Just like instrument tie, we're gonna throw that twice. Finger out your index finger, touch it, you wanna grab this portion right here, and you wanna throw that down. The way to lock this is to um, hold your post, and instead of your index finger going like this here, you wanna lay across your third, fourth, and fifth digit. So grab it like this here. You wanna lay it across there, and you wanna lay this one, left hand, across as well. So try that again. Grab it with your thumb and index finger, lay it across your third, fourth, and fifth digits, lay your left hand across, and what you're gonna do is you're going to grab with your right index finger the suture in your right hand, and then pull it through. And that's how you lock the surgical knot. This takes a lot of practice. I was very frustrated with this as a student trying to uh, learn this, but um, as, over time you develop muscle memory and you're able to do this a lot quicker. So we're gonna try this again. We're gonna hold the post with your left hand. If you're right-handed, you can hold the post with your right hand. I'm right-handed because my right hand is my dominant one. I like to throw my suture around the post with my right hand. So if you're left-handed dominant, you may want to hold the post with your left hand, I'm sorry, your right hand, then throw the suture with your left. So, just like this again, around your index finger, take it around that post and then grab it, pull it through. Lay it across, grab it with your index finger and your long finger and pull it through. So, after practice, you're able to do these quicker. And in the OR, it's all about efficiency. So when everyone's looking at you while you're suturing, you, you have to know how to do it efficiently as well as do it right. And you can see the knots that are in, in the uh, suture there. We're actually gonna cut this. And because of the suture and how small the suture is, I've actually brung a pair of uh, shoelaces and we're going to practice that again so same thing with your left is your post grab your index finger and your thumb together wrap your index finger around that post and then grab that suture that's right next to your thumb and then pull it through and lay it down so we're going to do that again And then to lock this, you want to grab it like this, index finger and thumb, lay it over your second, I'm sorry, your third, fourth, and fifth digits, lay this across, use your long finger to grab that suture and pull it through. So that's a one-handed surgical knot. For a two-handed surgical knot, like I said, most professors or surgeons in the operating room, your resident, chief residents, they may have preferences of whether they want you to throw a one-handed versus two-handed, but we're gonna throw another simple suture, a couple millimeters from the skin edge, take the same distance as well as the same depth on both sides so your skin edges are approximated. You wanna put your needle driver right in the middle, wrap it around twice, and then pull it through, lay it down. You see that goes down really nicely. 
right in the middle, wrap it around once, pull it through, and then to lock it, just not here, but the opposite side, wrap it around, and then pull it through. We're gonna try that one more time. And when you're throwing the one-handed as well as the two-handed notch, you wanna make sure that you leave enough suture on both edges so that you have enough uh, tying kind of wiggle room. So this is a shorter suture, so we'll make it work. For a two-handed surgical uh, knot, you want to, the first thing you want to do, and I'm actually gonna cut this needle off here. You're gonna to want to cross your hands. So, your index finger and your thumb is gonna be on your right side, like this here. And then, same thing on your, your, your left hand. Essentially, what you wanna do, you want to grab You want to grab the two in your hands like this here. And this in my left hand is gonna go through the, the knot here. So I'm gonna throw one and then I'm going to explain it. I'm gonna grab it and pull it through. And you can see this is kind of twisted, so we're gonna twist our hands and then that's gonna lay down there. We're gonna do that again. In, inside the knot, you wanna make sure your left hand goes through the loop and then pull it through. And then one more time to lock the knot. Your index finger is this way, then pull it through. To explain this better, we're gonna actually use the shoelaces. We're gonna untie this previous knot here. So grab your index finger and your thumb on one edge of it and do the same on the other. And you want to essentially make a loop right here in the middle of this. So I'm grabbing this and I'm gonna use my right index finger to grab my left uh, suture here. Just like this here. You want to utilize your left hand. Your left hand is going to go through the loop here and you're gonna grab the suture in your left hand. So you're gonna go through the loop and you're gonna grab the suture and you're gonna pull it through. So we want to make sure we switch our hands. That's the first thing you do so um, we can actually throw the knot. Grab your index finger as well as your, your thumb, both edge of the suture, and then you want to pinch the other side like this here. We're going to throw the left hand, the suture. We're gonna throw it through the knot, the loop, and then pull that through. And then you can see the, the loop of the suture here. You want to lay that down. We're gonna do that again. Pull it through, and then switch your hands and lay it down. To lock this surgical knot here, you wanna do just the opposite. So we threw with your index finger through the loop the previous time. This time you wanna use your thumb, then pull it through, lay the knot down. So we're gonna do that again. Use your index finger to throw it under the knot there. And this time use your thumb to throw it through the knot and then switch your hands. So we're gonna throw that a couple more times. Index finger and thumb. Index finger and thumb. You want to grab with your right index finger, throw it through the knot and then lay it down. To lock this, you wanna do just the opposite. Grab it with, with your thumb and then pull it through and tie the knot. We're gonna practice a, a few one-handed. So your, your, your left hand is your post. 
index finger and your thumb together, wrap it around your posts, then grab your index finger and pull that through. And then to lock it, the uh, third, fourth, and fifth digits, you wanna lay the left hand over those two. Use your middle finger to grab that suture, then pull it through. So this essentially takes a lot of practice. I was frustrated trying to learn these surgical techniques. Um, and this is something that if you don't practice all the time and if you don't do a lot of them, um, you can kind of lose this skill. A plastic surgeon in medical school suggested that at every red light that I grab some suture and I throw one-handed as well as two-handed surgical knots on the steering wheel. And that's essentially what I did to practice and it becomes a kind of muscle memory. You're able to throw these sutures really quickly in the operating room while you're chatting with your anesthesia team, your, your surgical nurse is telling you about the next patient or the floor nurse is calling about some lab that's abnormal. You have to be able to keep working in the operating room as well as uh, you know respond and communicate with other people. So it takes a lot of practice, but eventually if you keep practicing at it, um, you will get better. I wanted to thank the sponsors over at Artasia and SutureKit.com for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this four video series on how to suture like a surgeon. Put it in the comments below. What was your favorite part of this uh, video series? Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them.